Alright folks, we're back at it. First video of 2022. We're going straight in with some super, super modern gear, high tech, all the latest materials. We're looking at the Eclipse belt from Axel Advanced. First things first, they did send this to me for free, along with the inner belt. So, full disclosure on that one, just letting you know. The long and the short of it, as long as you are not expecting any sort of LBE webbing belt rig, belt line kind of deal, yes, personally, I'm a huge fan of this thing. As far as, you know, small belt lines to accompany a plate carrier or a chest rig, this kind of belt is the way forward. Now I've got it rigged up here with a bunch of pouches. As you can see, straight into it. There's no, there's no fishing wire, there's no tricks. This thing is rigid. And yet, the actual tegris part, which is the main material this is made of, is under two millimeters thick. It's about one and three quarter mil. In total with the cordura layer at the top, it's about three millimeters thick, three and a half. And yet, as you can see, there's, uh, yeah, if I had loaded mags in here, yeah, it would sag a bit. But, um, pretty, pretty strong. Like I've compared this to, you know, uh, belts that are multiple layers of webbing with plastic stiffeners and the overall stiffness is at least at that level, if not a bit more in the vertical plane, if you try and crush it. So as I say, the main material looks like carbon fiber. First time I saw this stuff, I thought it was carbon fiber. It's actually something called Tegris. It is a thermoplastic. There's a couple of others out there on the market that are similar. Um, the one Axel have used is the Tegris for the Eclipse belt here. It's much like the old style, uh, what has become very standard, the MicroPals belt, I call them the two, width, two inch width belts with half inch Pals webbing top and bottom. Uh, in terms of function, you know, you can get your, your belt mounted accessories on, but you can also weave your molly pouches, your pals pouches of, of all kinds, any kinds of straps, malice clips, whatever you want, they will weave through the slots and uh, just attach like normal on, on any pals platform. Of course it has the, uh, it has the hook and loop interface. So you've got, it's only one inch hook this isn't fully lined with two inch hooks like a lot of them out there, which is interesting. The thing you've got to bear in mind is once this is actually worn, once this is wrapped around your body, the way Velcro works is it, you can only really separate Velcro by peeling it. You can't shear it. Like, no matter how much pressure you apply versus trying to push the belt this way, or push it apart, then you can peel it easily, but it won't push. Um, so, once you've actually got it wrapped around you, I would say that inch Velcro worth of uh, surface contact is actually perfectly adequate. I've got no problems with it in that regard. Cuts down a little bit of weight and bulk as well. Adjustment. This is actually, they call this infinitely adjustable because it can keep going inside itself. So you've got this two inch loop here and the tail of the main body of the belt tucks into that. And that just helps with that rigidity really locks things in and that pairs with their scissor G inner belt which we'll look at in a sec. So you've got one sort of locking point there then your main your main closure at the front can be various options. The standard that they will ship it with is a G hook so you have your G hook on your webbing here and it hooks into this loop and not only can you reel out this uh, webbing here so you've got one wrap closure which if you get one you're going to want to get this tight so you can open that up and then there's a there's a tail of webbing which you can adjust this piece here is removable kind of like a, a mini pouch almost and you can position that any way you want so you probably want to go a size up and you can always shrink the belt what you probably don't want to do is try and size down and try and bring it out it's not as optimal in that sense because like so where i've got the at the male attachment piece here, this is as, as big as the belt will go, but it can go in and adjust the belt down pretty much forever. Um, now you do size these, you say, to your, to your trousers, your pants size. Um, so if you, 
I wear Cry G three thirty two R, and this is their small belt, and it's as you can see, I've got you know I've got a little bit of run out webbing here, um, but still I've only taken out about half of what I could, roughly. Um, there's still adjustment to go, although it would the tail if I if I adjust it out much further than where it is right now tail wouldn't be tucked into uh, into that loop on the inside. Now for your buckle options, as I say, the, the G-hook is the standard and um, you can you can also unloop this side of the webbing, so it's route through the Tegris, through this, uh, through this metal tri-glide, back under this uh, elastic here, and so you can remove, you can remove this side. And the G-hook, obviously they're made of steel, super durable. For my purposes, just playing airsoft. Uh, I've got the uh, ITW buckle here. It's simple, it's light, nice camo match. Um, I, I like the plastic hardware. These can, they can break if you are diving down on rocks and on concrete, blah, blah, blah. You could break, you know, an ITW's one inch side release buckle, potentially, if you did it a lot or you weigh an insane amount and you dive on it on like a solid rock right on a point you could break one of these whereas the g-hook is going to be more durable another option an axis axle sent me this as well they offer this is a raptor buckle this is sort of like the american equivalent of austria alpin this is the one inch version of their their uh, raptor buckle axle with custom uh, lasering on it these are made of 7075 aluminum, which is the same as an AR-15 receiver. So they are rock solid, they are riveted together uh, in a very similar way to aircraft components. So yeah, if you want something that's going to survive the absolute apocalypse, you can pay. They are extra, these, these things, um, if you want the most durable buckle, but yeah, you can get the Raptor buckle. Now, weight-wise, the big thing about this is that it's super slim super rigid and it weighs just it weighs nothing it, it's quite ridiculous compared to uh compared to the other standard options out there um so i've got a little cheat sheet on me and i'll flash up the uh, pictures so just the belt with no with no g-hook or attachment at all it's 116 grams just over 100 grams okay if you add a g-hook 129 Get the Raptor buckle, 177 grams. When you add the Syzygy inner belt and the G-hook, which is sort of the standard config, you're looking at 184 grams. If you've got the Syzygy inner belt and the Raptor buckle, you're looking at 231 grams. Sort of the heaviest config. Now this is the small belt, this one here that I have. So you've got to add dozen grams maybe if you step up to a medium or a couple of dozen you go to a large but as I say without a buckle just a smidge over 100 grams which is a, a few ounces I'll, I'll flash up some ounce conversions insanely light and yet super strong rigid thin just so much less bulk than your standard pals belts out there and with all the same sort of configuration options belt mounted accessories, pals pouches, super comfortable. Now I had a concern, this this exposed edge would really rub in use as soon as you started crouching, kneeling, running, you know, getting down, squatting behind cover, blah blah blah. Uh, worn this, a couple of airsoft games, spent maybe 10-12 hours wearing it, just running around, you know, getting in all those squatting, kneeling, down and prone, up down, leaning around stuff, and I never felt any sort of biting from this at all. Now, if you were rocking, you know, doing a Bergen tap as we call it, for miles and miles, could you? Yeah, potentially, I, yeah, I haven't tried it. Um, that would be something you'd have to ask someone other than me. How durable it will be if you are, you know, crawling over rocks and stuff, whether this plastic thermoplastic uh, is going to hold up over an incredibly long time, I genuinely don't know. I know it's it's expensive material, 
it's not going to just break on you just like that. It's not going to it's not going to fail easily. Um, but whether it'll be durable as webbing over a long period, I don't know yet. This is an initial look at the belt. We'll quickly mention the Syzygy inner belt because if you buy the Eclipse, definitely consider getting the Syzygy. It is a bit expensive as an inner belt goes, I will say that, but it's worth getting. Now, it's pretty simple. You've got made of Cordura, you've got a nice quality Velcro brand loop on it, closes with a little one wrap closure. And then super low profile, super thin. The nice thing it has is this extra webbing loop and the tail of the Eclipse. When you've got the inner belt on and you put the Eclipse belt on, you tuck it through the inner like so. And then like when you do everything up properly, you'll also go through that loop on the Eclipse and then you've got two points locks everything in really nicely, nice and secure. I've found this combination, in the little bit of time I've used it, I've found it to be excellent. Incredibly comfortable is that, I don't know about you guys, but personally what I look for in kit is that when I have it on or I'm using it, I don't notice it. That's the ideal, that's what I look for. And the Eclipse does exactly that, especially with the Syzygy uh, combined into a, a complete whole package. Another good thing is the price actually, at least on the Eclipse. The, the Syzygy is 35 uh, USD, which is a little pricey, I think, for what it is. Not too bad, but it's, it's a little on the pricey side. The actual Eclipse itself is only 105 with a, with a G-hook on the front. Now, I had a quick look. So people often talk about the Ronin Senshi as like sort of standard in terms of a, a modern two-inch belt that can accept pouches. And the cheapest one is about 140. And that is absolutely ancient technology. It's, you know, multiple layers of webbing, weighs far more. It's probably really, really long term. It probably is more durable, admittedly. Um, but technology wise, it is massively out of date in terms of fabrics and composition. And it costs about $35 more than an Eclipse. So, yeah, I think, I think it's $104.95 with, with the G hook for just the Eclipse belt and technology wise compared to other comparable American made uh, belts on the US market. Yeah, really considering how slim and modern and super light this is while still remaining stiff and strong. And, and you know, it, all them all obviously without saying, the stitching's really good, neatly done. The Cordura, obviously mil-spec stuff, mil-spec laminate. Tegris is expensive stuff, so yeah, I am really impressed at that price point. I was expecting, like, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the Blue Force Gear Chalk. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know that is a lot more than this. Obviously it's rated, load rated, um, and it has the curve built in. Uh, but there's a big price difference between the Blue Force Gear and this, a very big one. Overall, super impressed by the Eclipse. For all the reasons I've already mentioned, Check it out. I'll have a link to the actual website down in the description. Give it a look. If you've been using the, the, uh, the belts with the many, many layers of webbing to them for many years and you want something that's slimmer, but it's still going to be strong, it's going to do the same stuff for you, check out the Eclipse. Give it a look. Give it a try. I think there's a pretty good chance that if you pick one up, you're going to be happy with it. I do wish they had camo all the way down. Um... I'm surprised there's as many metal rivets in it as there are, but that is all I've got for you for, for criticisms and negative points. You, there's obviously nothing's perfect, there's always going to be, as I, I do wish it was full camo, but that's, that's a minor aesthetic thing. Other than that, as I say, slim, light, great price for how modern it is, made in the US, out of the very latest materials. Super comfortable in my experience. Check it out. Cheers for watching, guys. Do all the usual if you don't mind. I'll see you next time.